Hey guys, Jared with the Running Training Group, and we have Blake here from Maneuver Training Solutions who works directly with us uh, quite often. We're very lucky to have him. Uh, not only is he physically attractive, but he has uh, quite a skill set. So um, he's going to take it away. What we're talking about today is shooting. So go ahead, Blake. All right, yeah, so uh, we did a couple of drills for you guys that uh, you'll see later on in the video. Uh, so one of the first things that we did is we set up a target right about 25 yards and we ran some doubles drills. Uh, the way the doubles drills is kind of meant to work is you get your one presentation shot. So whatever ready position you want, you come up getting whatever kind of sight confirmation you need for that first accurate shot and then immediately follow it up again with another one. Staying in sights, finger on trigger, weapon on fire, everything, you give it a pause and that is your opportunity to analyze what you may have done wrong or not ideal make a quick adjustment and fire again. And if things are going well, then that pause shortens and you fire out another pair. The goal is to push that to an uncomfortable pace where you are shooting predictively. So you get one sight picture and you're firing those two rounds, uh, trying to push yourself to find how fast you can shoot and keep those rounds accurate. Uh, and then where you start to open up your groups and now you're dropping a lot of C-zone shots and you don't have good repeatable accuracy. And then you work at that pace, tightening up your position, your connection to the gun, ensuring you're staying target focused, all those things to improve so you can keep trying to push that pace, right? Slow, smooth, and smooth is fast, but only if you actually work at getting faster and not just be a coward and use that excuse to stay slow. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, people are going to love that one, too. So um, we had this conversation offline earlier about that phrase, and uh, people use it as a crutch, right? Like, oh, slow is okay. But the phrase actually means is my slow should be faster than everyone else's fast because I've trained that much. Yanking the sights back down. Yeah, and difference for practical application of an inch as far as talking about an organ, you know, or a half inch, still a fantastic hit. Yeah, uh, I mean, for 25 and trying to push aggressively, that's not like the end of the world. And I know the shot that it happened on. I know why I did it, so I know how to fix it. Uh, so the point, you know, coming out here and shooting is to shoot at an uncomfortable pace which I definitely get a shot faster overall because that's a fairly tight group for 25. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll try to push it now as a lefty and we'll see what I can do. All right. So I already know one's going to be high left for the same thing we talked about before. I start watching the site. I'm like, there it is, pull the trigger. So yeah, we're definitely going to have one high left. Yeah, I see him. So as you said, it's the same thing that happened before. We were talking about left-handed shooters watching the sight with the recoil pattern, and that's exactly what happened. And you hear a lot of professional shooters talk about watch the target, paint the target with the dot. That's because I, and I caught myself, so this was group, this is my fourth group, and on the fifth group I was like, shit, Blake said to fix that, so the other the last two were in yeah. here. So with right-handed shooters, that one will often end up up here, which lets me know that they're starting to track their sights and not staying focused on that refined point on the target. And then for me, as a right-handed shooter, I start getting impatient with where the dot is and I try to yank it back down, but a little bit of movement at us becomes pretty big down here at the target. Uh, but overall, what this target says is I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, if, uh, if points mattered, you know, if points mattered. I would have just told you that anyway. <laughs> so after we work through the doubles drills, which you'll see, and we can go ahead and talk about it now. First of all, Blake is better shooter than I am, okay? And you're going to hear it on the video later. He's like, well, ultimately what we figured out is I'm better than you. He's right. This is the one I threw, and of course the target was faced this way. So you want to talk him through why that happened for me? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, trying to push the pace and... For Jared being a left-handed shooter, uh, his recoil pattern as far as what happens, the behavior in his sights, is going to travel more towards his right, towards his support hand. 
Uh, so for all you right-handed shooters, you are, uh, excuse me, towards the left. Mm -hmm. he's, he's messed me up. The I'm flipping the targets target. around on him. Yeah. yeah. So uh, more towards his uh, his strong hand, his left side. Because I'm pulling Whereas in, a right? right-handed shooter, right, it usually tracks up and towards the right. Now, ideally, your sight behavior just like goes a little bit towards the 12 o'clock and drives right back down right to where you're staring at the target. And because of that behavior of that sight going up, when you start to focus more on your optic, your sights over staying focused on that refined point on the target, that's where those rounds start going high. Yep. Now, there are obviously other things that can affect it. If you are putting movement into the gun as you fire, that is going to also cause your sights to be off target and cause your rounds to be uh, off target where you want them. But if you are tracking your sights on top of that, that's where you really start seeing a lot of movement down on the target as far as your impacts go. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay target focused and not start trying to track your dot. Remain focused on target, understand how much sight confirmation you need for that shot and allow the sight to come back to where it needs to, to follow it up. And for me, coming from a law enforcement background, a lot of the training that we had, um, like for our qual for SWAT, it was a B8 size circle on a man size target. So these kind of groupings are what we were training for. Um, this would have still been a passing shot. It had been a one instead of a two point. But as Blake said, I started to focus on what the dot was doing, trying to control the dot and not looking at the center of that target where I was trying to plug those holes, right? Yep. By doing that, I threw one and I, you can hear it on the video. I'm like, ah, I put one high left and I knew it. So can you talk about knowing how to call your shots too? Yeah, so <clears throat> we're talking about being target focused and that may go against what some people have been trained on, especially when it comes to irons. Everyone's like, front side focus, front side focus. The reality is that you want to focus on the target, and that's why dots are great because they enable you more to be target focused. So think about it playing a sport. If I'm gonna throw a ball to somebody, I don't look at the ball in my hand and then release it once I finally see the person in the background. I look at the person I wanna throw the ball to, and I throw the ball. Because if I don't do that, I'm not gonna get the ball to where it needs to go. So same concept with shooting. I'm going to look at my target and I'm going to bring my sights into alignment with that. If I go for a refined point on the target, you know, so like if you look at my flag patch, you're going to much more readily bring your sights up to that point. Whereas if you just see the person or you just see a whole Ipsic and just throw your sights up, you're still not having good accountability of where that shot's going to go. So the better you can refine your point on the target, hmm. and then you still are going to be able to see your sights in front of you. So right now you're watching this on your phone or your tablet or whatever. You can stay focused on us and bring your hand up in front of your face, and you obviously still see your hand, but you remain focused on the video. Same concept with your sights. It's in front of you. You can still see it. It's just not a hard sight focus. It's a hard target focus. Hmm. So in still seeing the sights, you are understanding what the behavior of your sights are and knowing where they are when you pull the trigger. So you should be able to know on every shot where that round went. There will sometimes be some discrepancies in that. You might think, oh man, I just threw a Charlie and then you get up to the target and it's actually right on the line inside the alpha. You're like, oh, cool. But you still identified that shot went in that direction you were just off by you know an inch or two in your ability to call that shot because maybe you're pushing your pace really really hard. So that's what that accountability is, is I'm still aware of what my sights are doing. This isn't a whole thing of like, just look at the target and point shoot. You're still using sights, but you're understanding levels of sight confirmation and remaining focused on the target, seeing the sights, so understanding where that round is going because in the context of what we're talking about right here, we're talking about making room entries and having to right. shoot bad people. So it is very important in that gunfight to have that accountability. One, because if I like miss big and I don't even hit the adversary, that round could potentially go zipping through a wall. Who's on the other side of that wall? You know, could be another team, could be 
you know, civilians, somebody who doesn't deserve to be shot. So that's a very low level of accountability. Higher le levels of accountability, if I've made the determination that I need to engage this person, I want that over and done with quickly. It's not a thing where I want to be messing around and fire, assess, fire, assess, and doing some long drawn out process. I want to fire, I want to burn that mother down because there's potentially more work that needs to happen. So I need to get that with, uh, get it done with sooner rather than a slow process. So high level of accountability of knowing exactly where my sites are and making sure they're in the right spot, nice and tight, on a small area of the target so I can do the maximum amount of damage in the least amount of time, hmm. finish it and move on to whatever is gonna be next. So when we talk about that um, in the context of 25 yard shots doing the doubles, and you guys will see when we do the CQB movements, we do a center fed and a corner fed, we're shooting longer strings, you know, three to five rounds. Yep. Um, how would you talk about, or how would you tell someone watching this to work on recoil control for higher strings? Because if you can shoot too fast, you can shoot three, four, and five fast, right? Yep. So what should we be doing to mitigate <clears throat> recoil? So that goes back uh, into why the doubles drill is really good. So you, you can do rhythm drills like a Bills drill, right? Six straight shots as fast as you can and going for all A zone hits. And that is a good drill uh, for recoil management. Now, ammo is not cheap right now, so you could drop that down to like a four round string of one, two, three, four. Uh, and that rhythm type drill is useful in building your comfort with getting those rounds out on a rhythm that you set in your mind beforehand. You know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's a useful tool. It's not a method of engagement, right? It's a tool to just make you more comfortable with running your trigger as fast as you can and ensuring you've got good recoil management. Uh, but even better than that are the, the doubles drill. Because the doubles, you can go six, eight, ten rounds at a time, and if you don't have to make any adjustments in those longer strings of fire, that means you're doing the right things and you're understanding what's happening down at the target, so you have a really, really, really good idea of what your accuracy looks like on target, and depending on your distance, you may even be able to see all of your hits, so you understand what you're doing. So the less corrections that you make, it tells you that you have better overall recoil management, and the way that we achieve better recoil management, keeping our sights where we want them and limiting their movement is through grip, right? Grip is kind of an all-encompassing term. You know, when it comes to like shooting pistol, that's really all you've got for points of contact is just your two hands and your grip. So it's important, but then that translates into the rest of your posture. If you are set up correctly behind mm -hmm. the gun, that energy is just gonna move through you and out and no big deal. The more rigid and tense that you get, the more it's gonna shake you. Right? So if you lay a two by four on a table and you smack on one side of it, the other end's gonna pop up. But if you lay something loose like a pool noodle on the same table and you smack one side of it, the other end's really not going to move, right? Because it's nice and relaxed and it's not rigid. So being relaxed and the only tension that you have is in your hands where it needs to go into the gun to make sure that those sights track nice and level. When it comes to rifle, now you've got additional points of contact because now I'm putting it in my shoulder, I've got cheek weld, and then you can even start utilizing the swing to tighten up that position and help reduce movement in your sights overall. Hmm. Uh, so all those different connections with the gun and making sure you're postured well behind the gun really, really helps in your recoil management. Hmm. So stance and grip for rifle, making sure you have enough meat behind the gun, you're stable, really super straightforward right yeah. and the metric is yes, are you making as fundamentals and are you making good repeatable hits at different distances mm -hmm. so the only other thing we haven't talked about right recoil is the rifle moving up and down what about lateral movement and we can go ahead and talk about it now because we we both did it um that's blake's because he's taller than me uh that's mine this is on the corner fed room moving our weapons laterally to address the target
Uh, can you talk us through why this can happen? Where and again, he's still having a very bad day, but if our standard is a zone at five yards while moving, why is this happening? So <clears throat> we both essentially fell into the same thing where we dug our corners and collapsing with our target. We were both at that point scanning from left to right. And what we didn't do is, you may have heard of a concept called 90-10. So 90% of the way, I'm gonna be as aggressive as possible in my movement. That last 10%, I need to hit the brakes. Yep. Uh, so a typical analogy I use in my classes is, imagine you're driving up towards a stop sign. If you wait till you're at the sign and slam on the brakes, you end up in the intersection. You didn't stop where you needed to, but you identify the stop sign ahead of you, hmm. you know how fast you're going, and you know how much brake you need for your car to stop your car right at that line of the stop sign. Well, it's the same thing here with shooting and a lot of different movements. I wanna be as aggressive as possible, but start to hit the brakes that last 10% of the way so that the sights stop where I should be focus where I want to aim on that target and I can stop my sights there and get my quick shots off. We both went a little bit over and didn't apply the brake soon enough. So that was my first round and then the next two were in the A zone and that was Jared's first round and his next two were in the A zone. So we're able to correct on the fly identifying that our sights were not aligned and when you watch the video there's not even a break in cadence. We overshot a little bit, but because we were set to have our sights aligned with where we're staring at the target, they just came right back into alignment and we followed them up with good shots. Yep. So skills that you guys can work on at home if you're dry firing, um, you don't have to go set up a target in 25 meters in your neighborhood. You just make a much smaller target. Like I use a sticky note at home. Yeah. So I'll do uh, not really a whole lot of point in doing doubles per se, but um, press out actually get good engagement on this sticky note or whatever it is, think about the size of a sticky note at five, six, seven yards, you know, it's gonna look like this at 25 relatively. Um, some people use little one inch dots, whatever. So up and press on that is good, but also how many of you guys in your dry fire are practicing lateral transitions? You know, put the sticky note in one corner of your room and in the other corner, bang, bang, and transition over to that target. And as Blake said, and I love that analogy of the stop sign, I've not heard that before, that's perfect. Um, you will find that if you overgas it, you swing past the corner or past the sticky note. So things you can work on at home, you can still work on recoil control concepts, but there's nothing like getting out and actually trying to shoot real rounds and test it. Yeah, um, and big thing I would say is like, do your dry practice, that's your actual training. Yep. Right. That's your training. When you go shoot live rounds, that is your time to confirm whether or not your training is doing, the, uh, your dry training is correct. Yep. Are you doing the right things? Are you focusing on the right things? And so when you go to the range, if your dry practice, maybe you've been really, really focusing on like trying to get the faster draw, well, then go to the range and work on that. Like every drill come from the holster. Don't just come out and shoot a lot of long strings and target transitions because that's not what you've been focusing on. You want to make sure that what you were focusing on dry now confirm. It's your evaluation time. Yep. Um, and that also reduces the amount of ammo you have to shoot. Because again, it's expensive, and it takes a lot of time to get out to the range, to get set up. So if you can just get there and do the things that you need to do to confirm and evaluate, it, it, you're gonna feel a lot better. Even if you're not where you want to be skill-wise, you're still gonna feel like you actually accomplished something rather than just showing up and trying to run every drill under the sun or do something else because you like shooting high round count drills. Yeah, 100%. All right guys, so I hope you liked watching us shoot and um, you know, we tried to give a little bit of a debrief in the moment just so we wouldn't have to remember it all here, talking about showing hits and things like that. Um, of course, we talked about it before, too. So if you have any questions about what you saw, you can leave a comment. Um, definitely would appreciate it if you guys liked the video. And then, of course, subscribe to our channel. It helps us out immensely. Um, as far as going forward, if you're looking for more training, if you're wanting to come out and train with us, OTG does open enrollment for U.S. citizens. Um, that means that as long as you are an American that can pass a background check, you are welcome to come and train. I don't care if you're a welder, an ex-Navy SEAL, whatever. It doesn't matter. 
We do small unit, full team. We do uh, all kinds of other stuff outside CQB, which you should be doing, medical. And then of course, Blake teaches a ton of stuff for us, like land nav, small unit maneuvering, which is what we're about to do tomorrow, uh, way out here in the boonies. So talk a little bit about Blake's company, uh, Maneuver Training Solutions. You've got your own website. Yep. ManeuverTrainingSolutions.com. Yep. And then his own Instagram page, which Mitchell will add at the bottom, Maneuver Training Solutions LLC. And you won't believe it, he has his own email. So you can actually email him directly about his stuff. Uh, tell us about where you're based and kind of what you offer up from your company. Yeah, so I'm based out of North Carolina, uh, a little bit outside Camp Lejeune. Um, there's a range alliance outdoors that if you're in that area, you're probably already familiar with, especially if you're a long range shooter guy. Uh, so most of my classes are there expanding to some additional venues uh, mm -hmm. through Eastern and getting into Central North Carolina and the Raleigh area. So I'm going to continue to expand uh, my venues within uh, North Carolina and Maneuver Training Solutions. And then we're also working to, to expand more venues just East Coast in general mm -hmm. um, to get more and not just, again, not just firearms. So primarily what I do is firearms. I do have a couple of classes that are introductory into uh, tactics and kind of start just getting on the wave tops of them. Uh, night vision um, too? You teach a night vision yep, class? Yeah, I have uh, night vision, white light, um, pistol and rifle classes. I have classes that focus just on fundamentals and it's designed so whether you are a brand new shooter just trying to get it all figured out or you're an experienced shooter you can still come and you will get value out of the class mm. uh, then i have movement classes so the whole class is focused on efficiency and movement and getting you comfortable moving around and shooting a gun uh, and then you have the night based class a so white light and night vision based classes as well yeah uh, and uh have not done one yet, but one will be set up here uh, sometime this spring and start doing a mid-range rifle and might potentially have some surprises uh, for that one for anybody that comes out. So it'll be a good time. So you're going to Go check Wendy. my website. Yeah. And then I also have an IG page for um, the business Move Maneuver Training Solutions LLC on IG. And so class announcements go up on there as well. Yeah, so go follow his page because that'll probably be the easiest way to see what's posting. Um, and then for stuff with us, everything he touches sells out literally in two weeks. So I can't plug any classes because they're all full right now. But we will be scheduling more um, outdoor maneuvering stuff. Uh, we call it small unit maneuvering. There's a green and black. Green being in the woods. Black is moving between structures. Um, just urban movement stuff, right? And then land nav. We're working on some other things in his curriculum, like how to camouflage and stuff like that. Um, things that people are, of course, interested in right now, but it's a bigger part of the picture. Everybody just wants to do CQB, where well, there's a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And Blake handles a lot of that for us. So thank you guys for watching. Like we said, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, check out his stuff. So appreciate you guys. You'll plug it. Okay. Easy day. Uh, so he's, asking, he's got his own website. He's got his own Instagram. Um, he's got his own email. Uh, we'll, we'll plug all that. So that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, Jared doesn't want people emailing him about me. <laughs> yeah. We, we can talk about that too. Um, Jesus Christ. You find some weird ones. You really do. I do. Okay. So I think we're good. Is it still going? It's still going. Oh, wow.